Hey guys and welcome to another fun and easy machine learning tutorial. I'm Naive Bayes. Ah, it's a good day to play golf. Or is it? Let's take a look at some of the factors that determine whether or not we play today. These features are weather conditions or outlook, if it's sunny, overcast or rainy. There's also temperature, humidity and wind. Please smash the subscribe button and click the bell icon to join our notification squad. If you think about it intuitively, we are more likely to play when it's not too hot or cold, which means overcast and mild temperatures. If it is less humid with minimal wind speeds, we are more likely to play. If it's too hot or sunny, we may become exhausted very quickly. Let's take a look at our dataset. So if we recorded our circumstances over 14 days, we have our outlook, temperature, humidity, wind speed, and our dependent variable which is whether or not we play golf. The objective here is to estimate the likelihood of playing golf, yes or no, given weather condition information. So based on this data, let's see how we can approach this problem using the naive Bayes algorithm. First, we determine how many yeses and how many noes we get from our dataset. So the probability P of C, or probability of our classes, which are yes and no, we can calculate this as follows. So the probability of yes is 9 out of 14, we can count 1, 2, 3, all the way to 9 total yeses from the 14 possible days. And similarly, we can count 5 noes, which gives us a probability of 5 out of 14. Now we also need to calculate the individual probabilities with respect to each features or weather conditions in our dataset. So for sunny, the probability that it is sunny given that it is yes, is 2 out of 9. So P sunny given a yes, why? Because from 9 yeses, it is only sunny twice, as we can see over here. To calculate the probability that it's sunny given a no is 3 out of 5. So from the 5 no play days, only 3 days were sunny. For the overcast outlook, we can do the same for both yes and no classes. We count 4 days that we got a yes and 0 days that we got a no. So the probability that it was overcast given a yes is 4 out of 9. And for not play class, we got 0 out of 5 respectively. Now we can compute these probabilities for all the other features. You can see how easy this is. So assume we need to classify the following new instance, where the outlook is sunny, temperature is cool, humidity is high, and it's a tad bit windy. Should we go out and play some golf, or rather stay indoors and watch a movie? Firstly, we look at the probabilities that we can play the game. So we use our lookup tables to get the probability that the outlook is sunny, given play is a yes, is 2 over 9, probability of temperature equals cool, given play is a yes, which is 3 out of 9. And similarly for humidity and wind, we have 3 out of 9 for both of them. And then we have probability that play is a yes, is 9 out of 14, as we discussed earlier. Next, we consider the fact that we cannot play a game. So for outlook equals sunny, we get 3 out of 5, temperature equals cool, 1 out of 5, humidity 4 out of 5. Wind equals strong, given a no, is 3 over 5. And then play equals no, is 5 out of 14. Then, using those results, you have to multiply the whole lot together. So you multiply all the probabilities for play equals yes, such as the probability that x given play equals yes, multiplied by play equals yes. So that is 2 divided by 9 by 3 over 9, times 3 over 9, times 3 over 9, times 9 over 14. And this gives us 0 0.053. And this gives us a value that represents the probability of x given a class times probability of a class. Or in this case, we have probability of x given play equals yes times probability that play was a yes. We also have to do the exact same thing for play equals no. So the probability of x given that play equals no times probability that play equals no. That equals 3 divided by 5 times 1 over 5 times 4 over 5 times 3 over 5 times 5 over 14 and this gives us 0 0.0206 and finally we have to divide both results by the evidence or probability of x to normalize the evidence for both equations is the same 
and we can find the values we need within the total columns of the lookup table. Therefore, probability of x equals the probability that outlook was sunny times probability of temperature equals cool times probability that humidity is high as well as wind equals strong, as we mentioned earlier. And this gives us our probability of x, which is 0 0.02186. And then dividing the results by this value, we get the probability that we played golf given x, and this gives us 0 0.2424, as well as probability that we don't play given an x condition, where we get 0 0.9421. So given the probabilities, can we play the game or not? To do this, we look at both probabilities and see which one is the highest value and that is our answer. And therefore since 0.9421 is greater than 0.2424, the answer is no, we cannot play golf today. Probably you guessed it right, it looks like a Bayes theorem. Bayes rule Now naive Bayes is based on Bayes theorem, also known as conditional theorem, which you can think of as an evidence theorem or trust theorem. So basically how much can you trust the evidence that is coming in? And it's a formula that describes how much you should believe the evidence that you are presented with. An example would be a dog barking in the middle of the night. If the dog barks for no good reason, you would become desensitized to it and not go check if anything is wrong. This is known as a false positive. However, if the dog barks only when someone enters your premises, you'll be more likely to act on the alert and trust or rely the evidence from the dog. So Bayes' theorem is a mathematical formula for how much you should trust the evidence. Let's take a deeper look at the formula. We can start off with the prior probability, which describes the degree to which we believe the model accurately describes reality based on all of the prior information. So how probable was our hypothesis before observing the evidence? Here we have the likelihood, which describes how well the model predicts the data. This term over here is the normalizing constant, the constant that makes the posterior density integrate to 1, like we see over here. And finally, the output that we want is the posterior probability, which represents the degree to which we believe a given model accurately describes the situation, given the available data of all our prior information. So how probable is our hypothesis given the observed evidence? So with our example above, we can view the probability that we play golf given it is sunny equals the probability that we play golf given a yes times the probability of it being sunny divided by the probability of a yes. So why naive? Probability theory says if several factors don't depend on each other in any way, the probability of seeing them together is just the product of their probabilities. So in our example earlier, we have the probability that outlook equals sunny given a yes times the probability of temperature equals cool given a yes times the probability that humidity is high given a yes times probability of the wind equals strong given a yes or looking at another example we can assume that sneezing has no impact on whether you are a boulder so the probability of sneezing and being a boulder given you got the flu equals the probability of sneezing given you got the flu times the probability that you're a boulder given the flu so the probability of a sneezing boulder having flu must depend on the chances of this combination of attributes indicating flu. Looking at the pros and cons of naive Bayes. It is easy and fast to predict a class of its dataset. It also performs well in multi-class predictions. When the assumption of independence holds, a naive Bayes classifier performs better compared to other models like logistic regression and you need less training data. It performs well in the case of categorical input variables compared to numerical variables. For numerical variables, normal distribution is assumed, or a bell curve, which is a strong assumption. Looking at the disadvantages. If categorical variable has a category in a test dataset, which is not observed in the training dataset, then the model will assign a zero probability and will be unable to make a prediction. This is often known as zero frequency. To solve this, we can use the smoothing techniques, and one of the simplest smoothing techniques is called the Laplace estimation. In some cases, like our earlier example, you can just add 1 to avoid the algorithm dividing by 0. On the other side, naive Bayes is also known as a bad estimator, so the probability outputs from the predicted probabilities are not taken too seriously. Another limitation of naive Bayes 
is the assumption of independent predictors. In real life, it is almost impossible that we get a set of predictors which are completely independent. Naive Bayes can be used for the following applications. For credit scoring for e-learning platforms, medical data classification fused the Naive Bayes approach. It can be used for real-time prediction, so Naive Bayes is an eager learning classifier and it is really fast. Thus, it can be used for making predictions in real time. So this algorithm is also well known for multi-class prediction features. We can predict the probability of multiple classes of the target variable. It can be used for text classification, spam filtering, and sentiment analysis. So the naive base classifier mostly used in text classification due to better results in multi-class problems and independence rule, having higher success rate as compared to other algorithms. As a result, it is widely used in spam filtering to identify spam email and sentiment analysis, in social media analysis to identify positive and negative customer sentiments. It is also used for recommendation systems. So the naive base classifier and collaborative filtering together builds a recommendation system that uses machine learning and data mining techniques to filter unforeseen information and predict whether a user would like a given resource or not. Okay, so that is it from me. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Click the bell icon if you'd like to see some more machine learning tutorials. And please support us on Patreon. If you'd like to download the script to this video, please click the link down below for free download. And stay tuned to the next lectures where you'll see how we can implement a naive base algorithm in Python. Thank you for watching and see you in the next lecture.